Sabuta and welcome to a very special episode of Gallcast. First and foremost, I want to thank everyone for being extremely patient and positive and kind as I essentially have been trying to get my shit together for a while now to do this. So as a reward, I wanted to give you guys a nice long episode for you guys to uh, hopefully enjoy. But more on that in a minute, as I want to take some time to do some updates on the future of Gallcast. Starting off, I would, I'm would i going to try my best for this to be the last hiatus that I do because of personal reasons or whatever the case may be. I thought that when uh, Branagar left the show, I would be able to um, find more time to do this. I thought I would be a little bit more manageable because there was one less person to have to schedule around. And boy, was I wrong. It turns out I was the one who had issues scheduling around myself. So I am very happy to kind of tease that a new co-host will be joining the show here shortly. While yes, doing the show by myself is a little bit easier to try to schedule. Uh, when I have a co-host, I'm able to kind of focus and kind of uh, treat it more like a job per se because I'm working with another person. I'm able to organize a lot better and I just think it would be the best thing for the show moving forward. Now as far as who the new co-host is going to be, I'm going to leave that as a surprise for now. I will say they are someone who has been a guest on the show before. Now, if you're wondering why I keep doing these little hiatuses, it's essentially burnout for the most part. Part of the cause of that burnout was the series on the various traditions in Gaulish polytheism. Um, it was extremely taxing to try to schedule everyone. There was the one episode that I basically had to completely redo because the computer I was using at the time um, froze and I lost the first half of the conversation, so we had to reschedule and do the episode all over again. I don't have the computer anymore, however, I do have some new tools to make sure that that doesn't happen ever again. With that said, I am going to pause the series on the Gaulish traditions. I, I will do them from time to time, but because they are so hard to do, I cannot do them back to back to back. So, after this episode goes up and I coordinate with the new co-host, we will start uh, a new series, probably a different series at the same time. Who knows? We have, you know, new ideas we're going to try out to keep the show going some more, be more uh, consistent, uh, put out more episodes. Uh, I definitely want to get back to doing the YouTube some more. Um, I've been getting a lot of comments that people want more episodes, and honestly, I miss doing them. So, with all that out of the way... Let's talk about the episode I have for you today. I had a TikTok live that basically turned into an impromptu podcast. May, not necessarily Gaulish themed, although I do bring it up on, on a couple uh, occasions in the episode. It's more of a, it's more of like a pagan community, polytheist community kind of conversation I have with several people who I am friends with on TikTok, and. Um, it, it was a wonderful conversation. There was a lot of neat stuff uh, that we'd all discussed. And I just think that um, it's a, it would be a nice treat for you guys who have been waiting so patiently. Um, so as kind of content for now, until the new co-host joins the show and we get back into full throttle, full Gaulish polytheism discussions. If you are listening to the audio version of this, I'm going to try to lay out some context. Uh, first bit of context is uh, this took place uh, about spring or summer of last year. Um, somewhere around that time, it was nice and warm. I was outside my tent carving on TikTok Live. I had some friends uh, hop in and then basically I stopped carving and it just turned into a impromptu podcast episode. So that's why I'm, I'm not do my normal cadence. I'm not really asking Gaulish questions. There are certain individuals who are mentioned that are that were kind of problematic on TikTok. Um, 
there's people typing in the comments that I address from time to time. So again, if you're listening to the audio of this um, and you hear me kind of rattle off something out of nowhere or say something kind of weird, it's usually me addressing someone in the comments. So with all that said and out of the way, um, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I uh, hope you all look forward to uh, what my new co-host and I are going to be uh, going to try to do. Um, hopefully, it all uh, works out, and the show just becomes uh, progressively better, more informative, funnier, um, just just all around better across the board for you all. Um, again, thank you very much for being uh, patient with me as I was kind of getting my life in order, dealing with burnout, um, just getting my life situated so that I could continue doing the podcast. Um, Again, thank you everyone so, so much. Um, Please enjoy the conversation. But yeah. You you carved those? No, no, no. I Uh actually ordered those. (laughs) Okay. I was like, holy shit, you, you be the one doing these carvings and not me Mm -mm, no i ordered them uh so i had a conversation with this artist in 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 uh, sweden Mm, okay and i said i don't want something that everyone else has (laughs) so i'm gonna need you to give me something that it's only like for me so we had a conversation we talked a little bit and you know so he would get to know me a little bit, and then he made me these. That's awesome. That's basically what I do with uh, the commissions that I get. It, uh, this is like actually one of the first um, North commissions that I've had in a while. Because typically, because I'm a Gaulish polytheist, I usually get people wanting like uh, you know the Gaulish gods, the ones that you, so like I, I I custom make them for people, and I ask them what kind of iconography they want, uh, what symbol is what symbols that they want on them. Um, things like that. It's this is the first time I've done Freya in a while. Yeah. I mean, so you can pretty much put anything into Freya. She's, you know, strong and warriors and loving and motherly and vindictive. And I mean, she's a very multifaceted figure for sure. I mean, most of the gods are, though. It's weird, to they, say, but, you know, it's like a comment on your post where I'm like, I don't, I think it's so weird when people say, oh, god of war or god of love. And I'm like, well, Tur was actually worshipped as god of fertility. Yeah. And, no, I absolutely agree with that. Like, the, uh, they're not so one-dimensional that like you know like a god of war is only you know warlike that they had other other aspects to them mm-hmm. yeah uh yeah yeah that was i remember you commenting that that, that but it's absolutely true and that, that that guy is just um i was actually getting really frustrated with him because he would just refuse to listen to anything anyone had to say to him um, I mean, isn't that often the case, though? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, often, yes. I have, I have had a couple people like, like there. I think I've had two uh, guys follow me now who, uh, you know, I had a polite discussion with them, and like, I, you know, I was kind of able to, uh, you know, find a common ground and got them to kind of change their perspective a little bit, just a little bit. But. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can't change the mind of those who already made their mind up. Exactly. Know? Exactly. And yeah, that guy, I haven't Yeah, he 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 kind of like kind of disappeared after that. Um after that other guy, the the other Christian guy called him out and said that what he was doing was making them look bad and that he kind of he kind of disappeared after that. But yeah. You know what are you going to do? Now we got the now we got that weird lady who's or and I don't know I think I think they they identify as non-binary but the, that person saying how Norse paganism's a a, a closed practice and 
uh, just the weird, bizarre things that they're saying. But they have they have been making problematic videos for a while. They're dragging shit out of their own ass, and I mean, I to me, it sounds like they have too much time on their own to play their own monologue, and they don't have input from others. So after a while, your ideas become really fucking good. Yeah, exactly. And I, I actually, that's a really good way to kind of describe describe them. It, it just like because I went I went through a few of their videos and it just seems like they believe that their experience and their their perspective is like the like the standard like almost like Norse paganism revolves around them and what they have experienced rather than saying well this is how what I experienced and listening to other people's experiences um, and yeah but yeah uh, I think she, uh, they are just very sheltered and. Like refuses to to hear outside perspectives. So what the you know what she what what they have seen and 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 experienced is is the only the only one that's valid kind of thing. Yeah, it's sad though. They have a lot of followers that don't know nothing about um, Norse paganism, and they're kind of dragging them down the rabbit hole with them. And it's yeah. going to be so hard. Like, this is what I never get. And it doesn't matter if it's Norse paganism, if it's, you know, uh, whatever uh, the beliefs are or the culture are. Um, building something on lies will always get you backlash. And it will be a continuously backlash, no matter, right? Because there's always going to be someone calling you out. And I'm like over here thinking that is a lot of fucking work. Like you're going to have to go to war for yourself and, and fend yourself for yourself all the time over mm -hmm. over a lie or over UPG, which is yeah. weird. Because, I mean, there's nothing wrong of having UPG, but make people make it known that it's your UPG. It's not historical correct or historical, you know, evidence based. Yeah, exactly, and that's that's something I try to do as well. Is I try to establish that what I'm sharing is my UPG. It's my perspective. I'm not saying that it is, you know, it is fact uh, across the board type of thing. And yeah, I think that that's what this person is just. Uh, yeah, and yeah, the fact that they have like well over a hundred thousand followers is very uh, troublesome. Yeah. Uh, it's like it's it's like swimming upstream but it's all the misinformation and appropriation in the name of Norse paganism is exhausting mm -hmm. uh, and especially when you use that rhetoric to to further white supremacy um It's because many people told white people have no culture. Well, the only one that is saying they're white people are people in, in countries that is heavily uh, uh, colonized, like United States. There's no one here. I have never been white a day in my entire life until I got into TikTok. I didn't like we don't identify. So it's not like I don't understand what she they are saying, but they're saying it in a way where they are upholding white supremacy instead of dismantling white supremacy and that 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 turns into a problem yeah well it and like just they're so confused that uh you know because they, they the, they've they've made it they, they made the statement that they are against white supremacy but is actively doing things for that agenda and and that supports that ideology. It, it is it's mind boggling how they think that what they're doing is dismantling white supremacy when it's it's not. It's it's helping it. Yeah, but that's the same way with all the people that use shin lines, right? And they say, oh, it's just cosplay, or it's just this, or it just that. And I'm over here going like. Well, do you think it was a big deal the first time, you know? a uh, white supremacist uh, touched a rune. No, it wasn't. But then, you know, fast forward, 
one of our symbols and it's not even only ours like this symbol is in in many cultures around the world the swastika and today it's we can never take back that symbol because yeah. of the damage done within white supremacy so we're actually upholding white supremacy by keep doing it and I, 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 it's just weird to me that people don't connect the two. Yeah. What's up, Bjork? Hey, how you doing? All right, it's just doing some carving and turn into a nice little discussion. I was just um, I was getting on effect of to where it was like um, like I watched her videos as well just to see get some context of what she's saying, and the thing is this um. A lot of a lot of um, white Americans, especially people who don't know they're being converted into white supremacy, they're looking for something to call their own, and they have nothing because over here in America, they how can I say a lot of people know that a lot of you know, American white people really don't have like culture, and so what's the one big thing that they have, which is being which is being blown up, which is paganism because uh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie to you the viking show and all that stuff and all those uh like the norsemen and all that stuff really kind of messed this um kind of um portrayed them as nothing but as white because as you see in the show they have no diversity in those shows so yeah. that's the only thing that they can cling on to well the second i can't remember the 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 name of that show but it, it after the the viking show they came out with another show and uh, the one of the jarls there are a uh, person of color we actually do have a jarl that we know about that it was a person of color color heliarskin and his brother was people of color so their father was norwegian um uh, well today norway right so mm -hmm. um and their mother was Mongolian, but their mother was was uh, darker skin complexion. So uh, her children became of darker skin complexion. Now, there's a lot of stories around Heliar skin. Some say that, you know, their mother um, swapped uh, her children for white children because she was afraid of what uh, her husband would say uh, about the children. But either way, so they are legitimate children and he grew up to um, become one very important Jarl in Norway. Um, and if you look at the trade routes, so everyone knows about the trade routes that was here during Viking age. What people don't know is 300 years before the start of Viking age, we had trade routes going down to South um, uh, Europe and into Asia. Because of a blood sut that was going around, the trade routes co collapsed and people kind of forget. And then, you know, they had to rebuild the trade routes. Yeah. Um, but um, think about it. There is no people group that had been able... I'm just going to put it out there. Look at the, the royal families around the world. If, if there was no new blood coming in, we would all be looking like 1800s royals. Yeah. The, um, uh, what was the Habsburgs? The, the Habsburg chin and all that. Yeah. They had cherry pop eyes, you know, uh, distorted uh, jaws, too many or too little teeth. They had, like, it was insanity. Uh, yeah. So, you know, if we're talking about like there's and we also know because of, of how people moved throughout the continents, right? Mm -hmm. Eastern Gather Hunters and South uh, Southern Garden Hunters was the first one up here after ice retracted. And then a group uh, came over from Siberia. And then, you know, about 3000 years ago, I believe if don't quote me on that, but I think 3,000 years ago. Um, can we say like between three and 5,000 years so you guys don't like put my head on the shopping block after this? <laughs> 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 there was a massive influx of people and they went from hunter-gathering uh, over to, to um, 
um, agriculture, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there was a whole new group of people coming. And then after that, again, you had people moving out and going back and, you know, the trade routes saying, I don't know, like we did not just pop out of the ground in year 700, like. Yeah, exactly. And just like how, uh, you know, not just Germanic tribes, but like, you know, even Celtic tribes were very migratory. Like uh, I made a, I, uh, I think I've touched on it in one or two videos about how, um, the Galatians who settled in, uh, you know, Anatolia, modern day Turkey were a Celtic tribe and, and they didn't, they didn't set up shop and then just, uh, like bring in other Celts so they could maintain, you know, purity. They, they, uh, adopted the cultures around them, which were mainly, uh, uh, Greek. And so they, they worshiped, you know, Celtic gods, Greek gods. They started, uh, bringing like, they, they, like they became like a hybrid, you know, um, Gallo Hellenistic people. I mean, so the Scandis went down and fought the Moors on Sicilia. Yeah. It's it's written on both sides. Um, yeah. Well, a lot of people think, even though with the Moors and everything, a lot of people think that it just stopped there. They don't believe that they integrated with the people. That's the problem. Well, I mean, people, like, I'm sorry, but people really, really want to stay uh willfully ignorant because the world is so much simpler that way yeah exactly they, they want to uh you know make it as pure uncomplicated and you know even fudlan even wrote about how but they were the, the Rus vikings but most likely there was a lot of slavic people among the Rus vikings right yep. and how they were um buying trails from from the the arabic uh, uh arabs and where so and they were always picking out out the most beautiful women um so you know and we all know that you know the vikings they like they didn't differentiate like they had children with just about anything that could bear their kids <laughs> let's be real yeah uh, I think Tiger Bomb said it best. Uh, they, they, they they laid pipe wherever they went. Yeah. See, <laughs> I think that people don't understand. They can't differentiate, differentiate the difference between the two types of slavery, which was property and pretty much as a prize. You see what I'm saying? I yeah. think that's the big problem. See, what happened over here was dealing with color. That's how come we got all this stuff yeah. in America and it's all fucked up. Everything yep. all messed up. But back in those days, they kept you as trophies to do as they want, not dealing with color or anything. And that's what I think people can't understand about the slavery thing and how everything got integrated. That's where I think that's messed up, the messed up part. Mm -hmm. So here in Norway, most of the trails that was here that we know about, it was actually from the British Isles, right? Because proximity. It was easy. Yeah. Um, but when that is said, trails also had not all trails, trails and and um, and it depends. It depends on what because I don't know. Somehow people seem to think that Norway, Denmark, and Sweden before becoming Norway, Denmark, and Sweden was one big happy family, right? Which wasn't it? No, we had counties or areas, and there were tribal. Mm -hmm. And they would constantly fight each other back and forth. And it wasn't because of, you you know, you were Swede or you were Dane. No, it was just, you know, I want this land or, you know, you you ticked me off yesterday. So I'm going to off you today. And, and, and then it became a blood feud. And that's why, you know, they have rules about that later on. <laughs> and, and, you know, if you can't... Uh, if you can't prove that you know you were uh, your action was rightful, then uh, you're going to be ostracized, or you know uh, you have to pay a fine, or or so 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 on. Even back then, um, but uh, uh, trails also 
uh, could have a chance of, of getting free. So your children wouldn't necessarily become trellis. You could buy yourself your freedom. You could show lenience to someone so much so that they, they choose to give you the freedom. Um, uh, you were still allowed to have your own uh, religion, even though you were a trellis. You didn't have to, you know, convert into uh, so there's a lot of differences between the transatlantic slave trade and the treldom that was going on in in Viking Age. Is the treldom in Viking Age good? Fuck no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm not talking for it. But there's differences between this. And if you yeah. look at the countries that also had slavery uh, in different forms. It didn't end because of a big war against slavery. In most of these countries, they married into families and just faded out. Yeah, absolutely. It, and, um, you know, with uh, it, it, and like, you know, but Bjork, what you were saying, like how a lot of times it was, uh, you know, like a, a trophy or a prize. I mean. Um, you know, I was doing research on uh, the uh, uh, Cimbrian War that Rome fought, and uh, um, there's a, a a term that you know it's not really used much nowadays. But there was a term developed from the uh, when the Ro when the Roman army was defeated, and uh, they were taken as slaves by the um, by the Celts and the Cimbri because they were allied at the time, um, being put under the yoke, is that they were paraded back to Rome technically as slaves, but as kind of like a, a big, uh, like trophy parade in, in, in a way. And they were like, you know, they were all, there's a, there's a painting of it, but where they're all yoked up and, and, and marched back to Rome to it kind of, it, it just as a big fuck you, you know? And so, yeah, but like, but what you, what you were saying is that it, there's a lot of like nuance to it and people like, they, they want to get rid of that nuance and try to generalize everything. And it's, yeah, it's it's not it's not good to to try to uh, you know strip that away and try to minimalize it because you, you know it's hard to understand or, or, or you know it's just very complicated. But you yeah. also lose you lose so much of the history, right? When you do that, because you 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 lose facets of the history and how how things became to be. You know, yeah. when you you take away all of this small, like you can you can. You can see it as small stuff, but also taken away. Um, it's equally bad one way or another. You have people that are romanticizing Viking Age, right? And it's like, oh, no, there's great warriors. And we all know how the fuck that ended. Listen, the stigma of World War II is still over here. My grandparents survived it. My grandfather was in a concentration camp, and so was my, my great-grandfather. Both of them were... were uh, in Norwegian, it didn't matter, you know, they were like my grandfather, great grandfather, he was a teacher. And because he was a teacher, he was in a, in a camp. Now, so the romanticization and sexualization of the Nordic people is still ongoing. Like, I cannot tell you how many times I've been offered to be bought to carry children. Oh, that's yeah. It's well, that's disgusting. <laughs> uh, but I mean, if they have checked my t uh, my 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 lineage, they they wouldn't anyway. So you know, I'm there's too there. I'm I'm mixed. <laughs> um, <laughs> too much. <laughs> I know. I'm a I'm a mixture but, of. But uh, you know. Oh, I I, I just uh, I. My younger brother took a, one of those ancestry tests um, uh, years ago, and we're, we're essentially a mix of, um, uh, uh, you know, Celtic and Germanic with a little bit of Baltic in there. Because I we we found out that we have a Lithuanian ancestor who, uh, during during World War II, um, because because he was Lithuanian, he uh, he literally had to change his name. Uh, and like, uh, it, it basically changed his whole identity just to try to blend in so he wouldn't be, uh, um, uh, sought out, you know? 
my grandmother's side, my mother's mother's side, I can trace back to Iceland. And because of that, they have, I, I can trace, trace it way back, like into oh, yeah. Ireland and Faroe Islands and um, uh, Ukraine. That's awesome. So I have most of the King Sagas I have lineage from. But, you know, most of us do, though. So when people, and this is what's funny, right? Because here we, we will say, yeah, we're Vikings, and we will laugh of it because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, the butt of the joke, really. And then you have all of these people going out there going like, yeah, I'm a Viking, and we're over here going, <laughs> yeah. It's all about the purity thing. <laughs> Everybody wants to be pure in something, but people forgot one thing to trade. And the world evolved when trading began. Mm -hmm. You can't keep purity once you're traded. That's going yeah. well, you, you They didn't even before that because they were, you know, they were moving across continents. We know this. People were constantly moving. And someone stuck and stayed and someone left. And, you know, there were not a lot of people when people started walking out. And some stayed and some walked back into to, to what we today call uh, uh, Africa. And then, you know, new people group left. And you have like 150,000 a year of of. of people on different location of course we got to have different phenotypes like yeah but that's the reality nobody want to wake up to at this day and age mm -hmm. nobody wants to wake <laughs> up to that so yeah i think that's sad though like think how easy it could be for people like they didn't have to be afraid no more like they didn't have right. to carry around all this anger and 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 hate no more. Like what a fr life of freedom that would be. Like I I I feel sorry for these people. I think people yeah. are scared to add on to their family lineage, their stories. Yeah, for real. Well, not you know, even that. Like, listen, a lot of the people I argue with on my uh, uh, account are people who claim Viking, but nothing but. So, you know, all the generations from Viking age until today is suddenly wiped out. Like there's no one with Scandinavian heritage that got over there during Viking time and actually stayed, right? You know, uh, 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 of those who, who have like Norwegian heritage though, right? They left here between early 1600 and early 1900. They have a whole ass family line that they're just like marching by. And then they talk about venerating ancestors. And I'm like, how the fuck are you going to do that if you're going to forget all of them between to this day and, and that day? You said the concept so eugenics started <laughs> Sweden was really bad at eugenics uh, and 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 uh, the Sami people the indigenous people here in Scandinavia in in the Nordic countries uh, was uh, it was insane uh, they measured skulls they measured everything they stripped them down they they uh, they went through the same thing essentially as the indigenous people of of uh, of, of the americas uh and 1800 was really bad at it sweden and norway did it too right we were no better and still today uh, the norwegian government is breaking human right uh, laws uh, against the sami people as we speak it's uh, day 600 now since they actually had um the supreme court saying that this is breaking human rights uh, law and the government has still not done anything um so it's ongoing 
Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, uh, I'm mainly Swiss, so uh, and I know that there's uh, been a few famous eugenicists who were Swiss. Unfortunately, so we have our we have our hand in and that Swedish. as well. And Swedish and Danish and Norwegian. Like, listen, people are fucking assholes. They still are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, they are. Oh. Well, hey, I got a break from this live because I'm getting my driveway done. I'm getting it extended. So nice. I just wanted to come on and just say right. some things, nice you know, meeting you. It's nice meeting y'all too. And like I said, I'll start making videos again. I just, just didn't have them. I just, I don't know. TikTok just makes you not want to make videos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I I you. <laughs> yeah. It was good. But, having right. but all right. I'll talk to y'all later. Hopefully I'll see y'all again. Have a good day. Hey, thank you. Hey, y'all be well as well. Thank you. Yeah, it's funny. Um, Draugr, uh, my my wife, we we I think personally that she might have some Sammy in her as well. Um, we 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 don't have a DNA test or anything like that, but uh, but we've been like like been wanting to learn more about the Sami people, and uh, it's it's funny. Uh, hey, bud, how's it going? Um. But yeah, so uh, we were watching a bunch of videos, just just learning, because uh, she had no idea that there were um, uh, people in uh, Europe, the indigenous people of Europe, that were being, you know, treated just as bad as and as how uh, we've treated the indigenous over here. Um, and we were, uh, and she she noticed a lot of family resemblance to uh, a couple of uh, Sami people that we were we were watching. So she, so we think that she might have some Sami heritage. Just it, it was just a fun little little thing when we were watching videos. Not just were, still are being treated. Yeah, it's awful. I mean, it depends where you're at. They still be treated. They still are not heard. We still have a long way to go. Um, luckily, though, they're not. They're not being. It's not a genocide on them. Uh, at the same measure as because uh, they're not being hunted, they're not being killed. We don't have, you know, the the stargaze tours and stuff like that, like they have in Canada. Yeah. yeah. Um, the racism against them is pretty bad, and I know people say you can't be racist towards white people, and but have people have to to understand that these people are indigenous people, even though they're fair skinned, they are not seen as as. Uh, as Norwegian or, or Swedish or um, uh, Finnish, they they are Sami. Yeah, um, it's funny. My, my my best friend was born in uh, in Norway, um, and he lived there for a little bit before uh, coming over over here. Um, and uh, we were at work together one day because that's how I met him was through work. And a, a, a 18 year old kid who who had gotten a job there asked him because he talks about Norway all the time. Um, asked him, you know, is is there racism over in Norway? And and I, we both just kind of laughed. I'm like, it's not an American made product, but we have definitely, uh, you know, capitalized on it. And of course, we have racism. I like it's we everywhere has, and it's fucking bullshit if you ask me. But you know, I'm, um. When I was a kid, so uh, the Roma was treated bad in Norway as well. They treated bad everywhere. Um, but the old people still know phenotypes. So they would pick you out like there was a hundred kids there and you don't think you look any different from any of the other, you be fucking sure this old hag were to pick you out and hang you out for all of the rest to see. I, I wasn't sure what was going on when I was a kid. It wasn't until I got older and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> that was what's going on. No, no, it's all good. It's just, you know... <laughs> yeah, you might want to go get your kid, bud. <laughs> How old is your kid? Like we we played with kids at six years old, no, with with knives. We would do something. We had a uh, um, uh, a game called uh, shop the the land. So we would make a, a big circle, and then if we were four of us, we would would shop, We would like uh, 
uh, divide the circle into four and okay. we will stand in e each side of it and we would throw the knife into the, the, the side of one of the others, preferably your side main, because you were getting the land, right? So if your knife yeah. stood in the ground, that's where now your new new land was. But when it got too too small, we had to step out so we wouldn't get the knife in the foot. But yeah, that's... that's. <laughs> He's fighting super violent. Yeah, that... My, my four-year-old's kind of going through a, like a violent phase. Um, just doesn't understand that like what he's doing that makes him laugh uh it might might be hurtful <laughs> might be physically harming someone yeah yeah listen i didn't give my my son a, a knife when he was six he, he was a mess there was no way i was giving him a knife <laughs> no i um so, uh, uh i have i have five kids uh, and, um, my oldest is 13 now. I still wouldn't trust him with a knife, to be honest. And I was trying to teach him how to, how to do wood carving because they've seen all my carvings around the house. And, uh, you know, I wanted to teach him, but I did not trust him with a knife. So, or, or I, and I definitely didn't trust him with my, uh, my Dremel tool. So I, I let's, let's, let's start with like a, a nice safe pocket knife and go from there. Uh, he, but he lost interest because he wasn't able to use my, my, my power tools. So, um, yeah, it's just some kids. Just, get him, uh, get him a power uh, rule that isn't that expensive, and let him have at it. Yeah, well, I think his uh, my my uh, ex wife's husband, uh, I think, got him a little tool set or something like that. But yeah, I probably should get him some for for this house here. Yeah. So we were never we were always told to go play with knives or axes or whatever. It's like no, go to the shed do some damage in there like yeah it's essentially how i was raised too mm. like i had access to uh pellet guns and stuff like that for, at like seven and eight years old um yeah uh, i think i was i was six when my dad gave me a pocket knife for the first time so. i got uh, we went all the way up to northern uh, Nord, uh, northern norway when i was six and we bought this knife uh from uh a Sami man. I still have it somewhere. It's um, it's seen better days, cause you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where is it at? Okay, so now I only see my one knife. Where's the other one? My kid probably took it. Oh. I thought I was going to show you, but evidently I'm not because it's not here. So someone, someone been playing with knives. <laughs> <laughs> someone's, someone's got it. It's somewhere. I made a video yesterday about the days of the week. And I think maybe the person I stitched blocked me. Probably. I saw that video. Was I, co was I coming across as, as rude or condescending? Cause I really no. tried not to, it was just information, but I know that I use language a different way than Americans do. And often they get really pissy with me and I don't understand why. No, no, it no, was, we were, it was we were talking about, about, Yeah, We were talking about them earlier, but um, no, the video you did yesterday about the days of the week, it wasn't it was condescending at all. You were little, and you even said that you were just adding more information and context to it. I don't, I, I don't know how to sugarcoat correctly, apparently. And I mean, with a certain vulva, I have no problem being condescendent or judgy. Like, I am not a nice person when it comes to that. Like, I know people look at me and they're like, oh, she's blonde. She's tiny. She's cute. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, I, in like, I got tagged in another one of their videos and like, where she just, kept like throwing the word love in there randomly no context just over and over and over again and it was like it did it just it, it was bizarre i i had no idea what they're we even trying to say um yeah so fucking weird well to me now it's like time to do it norwegian way just you know 
insanely there they don't they don't exist anymore that's what we do with with groups and people that do something wrong over here we ignore them yeah, yeah I, I know they go by they them I, I that was a slip of the tongue by my part my apologies um but uh yeah my my buddy who's from norway says that too that like when people piss <laughs> like when yeah you just pretend they don't exist anymore yeah we're really good at that <laughs> insanely good at that <laughs> although my bud's got a lot more anger <laughs> so he he don't pretend he doesn't exist uh after he fucking thrashed at you because he's a big hockey fan <sighs> i mean Sometimes, like most of the time, I will try to 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 educate or correct and do it a nice way. But even I, I don't know. I can be as nice as I possibly humanly can as a Norwegian. It's still not nice enough. People would bitch and moan in my comment section, and that's when I'm like, you know, if you, none of you have even say, seen me condescending. Like if I were to make a video being. A Norwegian condescending you would cry for weeks at the end not you but that person right uh, I uh, <laughs> I am bad if people cross me too many times and don't respect me they cease to exist and they don't know it until they meet me the next time and they say hi and my eyes might as well be made of glass <laughs> and it pisses them off immensely and it gives me this good feeling inside because I'm a petty bitch <laughs> that's fair that's fair uh, yeah like if, I, if I'm pissed at someone I don't even make eye contact it, if I have to talk to you I will but I am not looking you in the eye like, I, don't... I know I'm not even talking to them yeah and like in uh Drogger. Yeah, that that that's and 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 I think like you you have a point there. And, and I don't think it's just Americans. I think just some people expect to be like kind of called coddled to. So like even if you're trying to correct them in a polite way, they just they get all offended about it because you are correcting them. They don't care how you do it. The fact that you're correcting them is offensive to them. I mean, so uh, I'm I'm not saying definitely not only Americans. What I'm saying on my platform, it's definitely most Americans. Oh yeah. And definitely a certain know. I demographic. On that, so. yeah. And it's weird. Yeah, I do know. I, I have noticed it's a lot of Americans that, that get all pissy about you. And it's just weird because, yeah, I, I, I remember the first time I saw one of your videos was when the whole, you know, uh, chin stripe thing was becoming a big uh, topic on here. And I didn't know. I, I, uh, I didn't know anything about it. So I, I just... I, and, but uh, yeah, after watching your videos, I, I, and then seeing other indigenous creators saying, "Hey, that's not cool to do that because that's that's part of our culture." I'm like, "Oh, that's good to know." Like, I wasn't offended by it at, at all. Like, I just I like getting that information because I don't want to uh, culture appropriate in any way, whether it's uh, especially if it's unknowingly. I don't want to, you know. I don't want to get. I, I mean, don't want to fall people into can't that. know what they don't know, and what baffles me is all of these people that cry in the comment section say, "Oh, you should have, you should have, uh, you educated." The thing is, though, so many of us, both uh, Scandinavians and Indigenous people, are in the comment section of these people and being really nice about it, saying, "Hey, did you know that so and so, and because of what they've gone through, and they're now just starting to reclaim their culture, and it's not a part of old Norse culture; it never was." And you know, and we're really trying to be mellow and nice about it, always. Yeah. And they always end not always, but many times they all they they end up like being rude back and disrespectful and telling us to go ourselves and stuff like that it's like you know when you told someone or someone had been told by 20 plus people in various nice ways and they end up flipping you the finger i i'm i'm not shy i'll call you out yeah that's so that yeah, it's a good point. 
It is how a lot of people treat it. But I mean, yeah. I mean, we have such a big culture in this in the Nordics, right? There is so many things you can do. We have so much uh, art. You can like you can get lost in the art for days. Yeah. And you choose a shin line that isn't even towards hair, instead of you know one of the magnificent carvings or you know (laughs) like um, to me it's lazy it yeah it really is lazy um rather than just yeah taking in that information taking the correction because a lot of times i say and do things and i'm not realizing that i've I've done them you know because like you said if you don't know you don't know but instead of like taking that information and and in correcting course and growing from it people just they just lose their shit about it and and they double down they they hunker down and it's it, it's it makes no sense. i mean we are all just people mundane people we do we do stupid shit all the time if we don't know we don't know be corrected isn't anything bad it's just addition to your information it gives you opportunity to grow which you know but yeah it, it, exactly and like um it yeah it is just crazy how people will just, they they take it personally like getting a correction because you know maybe uh, yeah you just, just even if it's just as simple as you didn't know and like how yeah i i don't understand it because i i it may not always be fun to get corrected uh but it's important to because you need to learn you know you, you got to learn and, and and grow from it yeah i i don't i don't get it like we get corrected all the time when we're in kindergarten when we're in school when we're like on, on, on in work you have to learn stuff all the time so yeah. how come suddenly you're grown up and you don't know how to learn new stuff anymore? You've been doing it your entire life. Yeah. It's funny you say that. I, I have uh, two co-workers who are in their uh, 60s. One's almost in the 70s. He just refuses to retire because he's he, he has no hobbies, yeah. admittedly. Um, and, yeah, they, they both of them had this attitude like uh, – one, one of them has actually said, yeah, I'm, I'm old. I've learned everything I need to know. I'm like – do you though? Is that really how you feel, bud? Uh, so him and I had a conversation about that. We hung out at break and, and um, yeah, it, it's just, it's this, yeah, this reluctance to learn is, um, is beyond me. Cause I love learning. I love learning stuff. Uh, I'm never not asking questions, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, TikTok is both good and bad, though, because we've been talking about, you know, the bad stuff, but good. But um, I met some pretty cool people on here. I have I've learned a lot, a lot that I wouldn't have uh, yeah. outside the app. Right. So I think, you know, those who are reluct- reluctant to learn or don't want to it's really their loss, though. Yeah, for real. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, same thing for me. I I've learned uh, I've learned a lot from this. Hey, salty! I was actually going to bring you up here in a sec or talk about you. Um, but yeah, like I've met some really interesting people, and like yeah, it, it can be very good. It can be very bad, uh, especially when people are just spreading misinformation. But um, like I was going <laughs> to, uh, I it's actually kind of funny how I met salty here because. Uh, Allison, um, she's okay, but she's still a Swede. <laughs> <laughs> um, her and a friend of mine named uh, who goes by Official Holiday Two Point Oh were uh, um, having a disagreement, and it was and it was just a whole big misunderstanding. And I was om- I was about to join in uh, um, and kind of like make it. I, I, yeah, I was about to do my thing against Salty. Without context, it was a good thing I did not because I finally realized that um, 
what Salty was talking about. I'm like, oh, well, it's a good thing I didn't do that. Cause, and now Salty and I talk um, at, at least once a week. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it, it's just funny the people you meet on here and, and like the people you can learn from. Salty definitely has a lot of knowledge. Don't tell her I said that because her head is going to explode. <laughs> Yeah, that that's definitely how it started off with you and I, because I I didn't realize that you were talking to, uh talking about a bigot, but the way you were, but like the the video you made was like taken completely out of talk, context and sent to me, so I I I yeah I uh it was a good thing I I, I came in slow because that would have been bad. Not I don't think Salty and I had a falling out before. Stuckers <laughs> just came out. Bef bef I don't think we had. Mm. Not not other than you know, just being a Swede. <laughs> uh, my uh, my Norwegian buddy, he he talks shit about Swedes and Danes all the time. <laughs> you like the siblings? We are <laughs> facts. <laughs> Like Sweden is Kevin. We're tro we're all throwing shit at Kevin. Denmark does. Norway does. Finland does. Yeah, I've heard. <laughs> but no one else is allowed to. <laughs> and I mean, they weren't even that bad. Like, listen. So we were four hundred years on in union with Denmark, which really wasn't a union. Let's yeah. The, uh, what was it the Cal Calvar Union? The Calamar Union. Yeah, it started out as Calamar. a great idea and uh, and uh, turned out not to be as such a great idea after all. <laughs> and Sweden said, fuck this shit. We're not staying. And they yeah. did. <laughs> and we were stuck with the motherfuckers. <laughs> Do you have a high power of luck money in this game? <laughs> uh, so uh, Dr. Deconstruction here is a cool guy. He makes a bunch of like um, videos kind of um, making fun of the uh, really crazy, you know, Christians that are on TikTok and YouTube and stuff like that. Um, I'm a... Uh, 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 I, I'm a, I, I follow a form of Celtic polytheism, uh, Gaulish. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm mainly Swiss, and when I was uh, kind of re, you know, reconnected to my roots, I found out that uh, Switzerland used to be Celtic back in, you know, up until the the rise of Rome. Um, so I've kind of been drawn to that ever since. Higher power of luck, money, and whiskey. <laughs> Dude, if I had, if I, if I had that kind of power, I'd be using it for myself. Even though I can't drink whiskey anymore, the smell of it makes me sick. Uh, there, there's other brown liquor you can you can drink. Oh yeah, I I usually just stick to like uh, just regular beer and and uh, ales and mead. Me too. Whenever I come across like religious lives, I I am so fast at uh, blocking. Uh, you can even see how fast it goes. Like it's it's the speed of of light. That's how fast that shit happens. I'm like, oh no. Yep. Uh, I I just scroll past them. They they pop up from time to time. Yeah. No, no, no. I had an invasion on my page a couple of years ago. Oh, really? It was exhausting. I'm not doing it again. I leave them the fuck alone. That's fair. I know. I know. Let's see block. how it works. I know where the block button is. I'm not inviting them. No, you can get on there. I built the damn thing for Fair you. Enough. You can get your butt on there. Yeah. How's it going, Holiday? I've made a swing for the youngin. Right on. Here. Hold, hold on, man. <laughs> Here, I'll show you how to do this. I yeah, I, uh, you and I know the reason I get like a lot of the super religious lies popping up on my feed is because uh, I follow. There are some lives that they're they're pagan, 
or they're you know atheist or whatever uh and i i hop into those from time to time and just kind of partake in the conversation but because they're usually they kind of fall under that religious category um other ones will pop up and yeah i just i just kind of laugh and scroll on but i haven't i haven't had an invasion yet you can only be blessed so many times a day my friend <laughs> And when they bless you with the 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 experience of hell, which is, you know, whatever, we actually have a place here called hell. So, I yeah, I've been there several it. times. So you know, I I don't really see the, I don't really see the fuss. Yeah. Then you know, I'm just like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Back just a You're very welcome. Hey, Hi. Amanda. What time is it over there? Where you at? Uh, so I'm in uh, Washington State, and it is one o'clock in the afternoon here. Oh, all right. Four o'clock here, there. and I'm in South Carolina. Oh, you're Ten. in the Carolinas. Okay. Yeah. You like it? All right, cool. 3 p.m. in Good. Mississippi. I've been in Mississippi. I've been lucky enough to travel a bit. And when I tell you, I have the hardest time understanding. Um, like the biggest culture shock for me was being in the United States. I bet. What uh, what about it, it was was, uh, was uh, hard Everything. to? I had no idea what people were talking about. Like the American sarcasm is just being mean, not being sarcastic. People will ask <laughs> you the strangest fucking things, and they will come all the way up in your face, going, "How's your mama?" Like they known you for twenty plus years, and I've never seen them before. I was terrified most of the time. Confused uh, as fuck, because so, I didn't know how to handle that shit. We stay at least five meters from each other. When we had COVID and they said like two meters, we were like, wait, what? We're staying closer than usual? What is this kind of bullshit? <laughs> yeah, no. Give me a fjord between me and my neighbor and we're like, we're, we're talking. That's so funny because, <laughs> uh, um, so my wife is, she's, Nor she's Norwegian and Swedish, uh, predominantly, and, uh, so, so like she's been trying to like learn Norwegian and, uh, um, and we were like kind of learning more about the culture over there. And yeah, we learned that like, yeah, personal space is a big deal over there. And we're like, wow, that would be so awesome because yeah, even even in the Pacific Northwest here, the people would just get right up in your bubble, and it's really infuriating. But yeah, sure. but like uh, what Mississippi's saying there, yeah, in the South, oh, it's there's like there's no personal yeah, don't space. Ever Listen, yeah, no. I was just looking around. I wasn't even looking at someone. And then accidentally, I locked eye with someone and they came over like, like I was the inner circle of their family. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> oh, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, that's Mississippi D&D, &D, that, that's the kind of. That's the kind of, um, I don't even know what, to, friendliness. That to us screams red flags. If people are friendly like that, yeah, no. The only way you can find people in Norway friendly like that is when we're drinking. So either we want to fight you, we want to fuck you, or we want to do both. <laughs> But if you expect us to say hi to you the day after when you pass us at the, at the street, we will not. That's not how it works, buddy. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. I've, I've only been to the South a handful of times because I have a sister in Texas. I have an older brother in Tennessee. Um, and yeah, the. Oh, man. Yeah, it, it's it, being, you know, even in being different parts of the U.S., it's just totally different. Yeah. It's just how, yeah, people are with each other. Really just depends on where you're at in South Carolina. Upstate South Carolina, you've got at the foothills of the mountains where I'm at, you got people that are 
half ass nice. You know, like if you have a flat tire, they'll be like, you stupid son of a bitch, what the hell you get a flat tire for? And then they'll fix it for you. But you get up there in the fucking mountains, hang it up. Ain't nobody nice up there. They're wondering why the fuck you're on their hill. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like the cold. That's why I, that's why I live up here. I, I Because I was raised in California. Um, and as soon as I got the chance, I moved, I moved initially to Idaho, um, and then it got really racist over there. So I moved to, uh, Washington. Yeah. That's something that we battle a lot down here. Yeah. Fucking racism. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's fucking crazy. As soon as you cross the state line from Washington to Idaho, it's billboards for churches. It's <clears throat> Trump flags everywhere. It is just, it is as red as red can be. And that's even in like the major cities where like the cities are fairly blue, but there's a, it's just, it's, it's, it's outrageous. Idaho is beautiful. I love going to, to see the scenery, but the people over there suck. Right? <laughs> I live in, I live in Norway, Mississippi D and D dad, and I fucking hate the cold. You can have it all. And the snow and the ice and the, the bipolar weather that shifts like every five minutes. You can have everything. I, I'm not, I'm not built for living in this cold fucking country. Right now it's hot and nice, but then six months of just bullshit and no sun. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday and today was the first rain we've had in a while because it's you know it's starting to get summer. So it's been the last two weeks has been blazing hot and i am i am six foot four i weigh 360 pounds i am not built for hot weather i was sweating i i was basically sweating bacon grease at at one point uh, <laughs> it, it yeah so it's it, i i i'm <laughs> so i'm mainly swiss swedish and lithuanian i am built for colder weather i love the cold i, I can deal with the ice and the snow i can deal with it i just can't i can't Melting. <laughs> just during this time of year i was in tunisia and it was 50 celsius i don't know what that is in fahrenheit um and i had a blast the tunisians looked at me going like there's no way you're norwegian we're growing inside it's too hot i'm like what are you talking about this is good they're like no you're crazy inside yeah <laughs> i'm like okay <laughs> My wife's kind of like that. She's, uh, I call her my sunflower because she loves to, like, when it's a nice hot day, she'll just go outside and just absorb all the sun. Yeah. While I'm inside, like, with the fridge open, trying to stay cool. No, I love summer. But, I mean, I understand that people, so, we have a, ever since 2018, we, we've been, like, lagging. Uh, because it's been so dry. Mm. Um, we had a lot of snow this this year, but not enough. Even though it was it was it was more than enough, if you ask me. But then the wind and the heat came, and now we're like there's a fire hazard, a wildfire hazard warning, and we have water restrictions, and yeah. <laughs> 50 Celsius is 120 Fahrenheit. Yeah, Holy. it was nice. I'm telling you, I had a blast. Everyone else were dying. I was like, no. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that was. Uh, I experienced that a little bit when I was deployed to Iraq because we we went in Kuwait and there was a sandstorm going on, so I had the heat and sand. So I just it was like a sandblaster I was walking through. Uh, oh man. I couldn't do it. I, that was too much. So, uh, where we was at in in uh, Tunisia, we were by the coast, so it wasn't it wasn't a dry heat, and I think that's what did it, though. Because I mean, um, thirty Celsius here, like today, it was actually thirty five Celsius, which is which is really warm for Norway. Um, but 
I live in inland, so it's a dry heat. And mm. this, this, the the sun really gets to you then. But I I'm not letting that stop in me. I'm out anyway. <laughs> first time i went to the south uh i was in tennessee in july my older brother was getting married and my dad and i had never been there before we walked out of the airport together and we just it was like walking straight into a wall of humidity we were just poo god that's how i felt yep. when i went to mississippi i went out of the 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 uh, airport and the wall that hit me yeah. i was like what are you breathing water down here Basically, I don't know how everyone doesn't have pneumonia. It's just because right? you're just inhaling Custom water. Pneumonia. <laughs> oh. Another thing that I could never wrap my head around, because here you can swim, right? Everywhere you go, you can swim. We have a law in Norway that's, well, I, I was aware of this, so I didn't ever try to do this, okay? Just to let you guys know, but we have a law in Norway that says if you're first at a creek or a stream or whatever, and you decide to strip down to nothing and sunbathe and, and skinny dip, that's your prerogative. If someone comes over and tells you to put your clothes off, you can tell them to go fuck up way up the stream or on the other side of the, the water or whatever. It's, you know. Wow. Um, so, uh, Skin was the thing. I woke up the first day I was there because I came like in the middle of the night, like four o'clock in the morning. And and I went out to the, the porch and my friend's husband and uncle was sitting there. And I went out in my boxer shorts and my um, tank top, but I didn't have a bra on. And I was going to shake hands and say hi and they looked like uh, I was some freak that just fell down from Jupiter or something. So I was like, oh, that was awkward. So I went into my friend and I said, your, your people are, your, uh, is, uh, your people are a little strange. <laughs> and she turned around and looked at me and she's like, you walked out like that? I'm like, like what? You walked out in that. I'm like, yeah. She's like, yeah, try putting some clothes on and then go back out. I was like, what's wrong with this? I'm not showing nothing. <laughs> but yeah, so, so skin and no bra was like, it, it was weird. Um, and the fact that it said no shirt, no shoes, no service. I was like, you have to. Okay. Mm -hmm. The billboards, like the life size billboards with like police officers in stores like if yeah, you still you get incarcerated i was like you have to tell people that That's this is yeah. Awesome, okay? yeah it's um it's pretty ridiculous uh we see the uh up here we it's uh the click it or kick it signs were like basically reminding you to put your seatbelt on while you're driving yeah they're everywhere up here yeah here so uh, that's what happens when Europe sends all the religion con conservatives to one country. <laughs> well, to be fair, well, actually, I looked into this and and uh, beginning of 1600. Yes. Most of those who left were actually uh, fanatics. Hi, Liam. Um, but after that, it was people who were mostly like the end of the sibling gang because they didn't get nothing because of mm. the law who were inherent. So they would sell what little they had to go over. Also, um, the big Ameri the land of milk and honey, you could get a piece of land for nothing. You could even get it for free if you can prove that you can keep your land for however long the homestead act yep yeah that's uh so, that's what brought my family over from switzerland yeah. that and the gold rush yeah yeah and many went over uh, with the gold you rush 
uh, also convicts went over, um, but keep in mind, many of them were convicts because of petty theft, not because of hard, um, yeah. like, crime. So yeah. There's a mix. Yeah, the, the, the various, you know, way, you know, like, the various things that cause different countries to immigrate, like, you know, the, 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 the famine for Ireland and, uh, it, like every country that, that had like a mass, I don't want to say, I don't know if mass exodus is the correct term, but just like had a big influx of, a uh, of people coming over here. Like the, the reasonings are, are, are pretty varied, but yeah, like for, you know, cause my, uh, my mom and my dad's side are both from Switzerland. Um, I think for my dad's side, it was the gold rush. From my mom saw it was the uh, the Homestead Act, and my my uh, my ancestor got a, a chunk of property in Kansas for next to nothing. Just could, like he he moved over and then just built a house and was able to keep the land. Yeah, people that went in the beginning didn't even know there was other people there. They had oh, yeah. no idea. And when they started to know, they used the same, you know. Um, rhetoric and propaganda as they used to when they during a uh, transatlantic slave trade right the same reasoning for why you could just take an an, an unalive it's insane and the churches was massive in that even here in norway so mm -hmm. uh in norway definitely so norway earned its first million on on transatlantic slave trade actually um it was built a sugar mill in norway which didn't last too long uh because it cost too much right refinery mm -hmm. uh it still stands today but um yeah but it was um it was a few families. I think we had five families that that had stood for the ships and stuff. Um, they did, however, hire Norwegian seafarers like to be with them, right? Yeah. Uh, the Danish crown had its own kind of uh, bank. Uh, for to buy back people because people when they went over uh, to to africa uh, those who didn't die sometimes uh, they got boarded by other ships right and they were yeah. sold into slavery so the danish crown had to buy them back wow. uh, or leave them that's crazy i didn't know that yeah, mm. Sweden tried also. Uh, they weren't really good at it, but they did try. So uh, here up here, uh, they didn't bring the the African people up here to work. They brought it to the colonies, so the Sugar Islands, for instance. We we've talked about them, I think, on two different occasions now. The... Whatever you like, like I don't. <laughs> I mean, it's not much to say though. They're bonkers. Yeah. Just, They've yeah, been yeah. sitting, eating, um, shrooms and listening to themselves for too long. Like this is all like rabbit holes that they made. I I have no other explanation for it. Yeah. Um. Tiger Bomb and I actually were talking about them uh, yesterday for a good amount of time. Uh, both trying to figure out where this person was coming from because, like, that they're <clears throat> what they've been talking about and their behavior is just so odd. It's it's hard to to see if this is like a weird, uh, like weird, like uh, I don't know, white supremacist reverse psychology type of thing. I I don't know. Like, we're just trying to figure out what is up with this person. But at this time, I'm thinking, you know, it's about time people let it die and let it die thoroughly because they keep uh, earning money probably out of all the bullshit. And I mean, do we want to feed them? Really? Yeah. 
Uh, my there. video was taken down for nudity and I was putting clothes on. So I don't know what's up with that. I oh my yeah, like any video yeah. that I think might be controversial, I I like I have to sit there and like look at my phone waiting for the the, the video to upload and process and then I literally give it like five minutes. Like if it's up there for five minutes, I'm pretty sure it's it's safe because I, maybe I didn't mention something or or whatever the case may be. Yeah, I've had videos taken down for weird reasons. Most of the time, it's bullying her and harassment. Me, yeah, I'm I'm the one you know bullying her and harassing people. I mean, but oh yeah, it's... you're you're the biggest bully around, man. Yeah, I'm I'm just a big old meanie. But I mean, that's what they earn money on, the controversial stuff. That's why TikTok won't take off this bullying, racist, homophobic, uh, bigotry m m videos, right? Because they know it's going to get a lot of attention. And mm -hmm. if you are in the, the like creator program or whatever, they've been asking me for freaking ever now. And I'm like flipping off the finger every time. Like, I don't want it. I don't like, listen, why would I? give like no why like giving gifts to someone they take what what is it 65 percent yeah like, it's insane oh first God. you buy the coins and then they take like over half of the coin like no it's uh i wish people would just stop doing that it's waste anyway yeah i agree it's like yeah, oh do you want us to push your push your videos no the fuck i don't i have enough attention <laughs> yeah miss it, it's it, it's weird how like it i, I think fate what fable says is, is it's like the 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 like if it's controversial enough that it draws attention and boosts things like they'll they'll let they'll let hateful shit slide mm -hmm. it that's absolutely what it is and then people like you know like you or, or Holiday or myself call it out, um, where are the bullies and, and like we get our shit taken down? Well, here's the thing with my end. Um, yes, my shit will get taken down, but I have been extremely fortunate in being able to uh, uh, appeal everything. And in probably the last six months, I've only had two videos that I could not get back. I've had I've had two or three. Um, oddly enough, the videos that that the videos of mine that get that have gotten the most reported and taken down were uh, a, a few years ago. I was trying to be a really good uh, you know ally to the indigenous people because I was following a lot of indigenous creators and, and and stuff like that. And anything I if I made a video really supporting indigenous uh you know issues like the MM, MMIW, those things would get mass reported and taken down to where I could not repeal them. It was the it, it was bizarre shit. I've had that uh, too when I post about indigenous. That's why I never, like I don't I will repost and sometimes duet and that's just about it. Cause now I know that you know um tiktok will take it down immediately uh, is it dean or don or i don't it's, know I'm sorry. i believe it's dean that uh, um dean i i think that uh um i think one of their videos they said that they witnessed someone who was not of scandinavian ancestry go through a bad experience and then that is their sole uh evidence for for that thought is is my opinion based on their videos that they've made okay so if we're on that topic then yeah that's it like listen so no one can really be a christian either because they don't have heritage from that exact place where jesus was born or whatever it's a religion like listen you don't i it's it's a white supremacy bullshit is what it is. They they claim not to talk for it, but every talking point and every dog whistle they use are heavily used among the white supremacy groups. Yeah, uh, and fuck them too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're just like shroomies. And they have had like a, like this monologue this this one-sided conversation with themselves and if you look at their videos they're talking to themselves 
So, yeah. you know, they're hyping their own yeah. ego up. It's all crazy. I like to refer to it as the uh, no girls allowed concept of like it. They just they want like this little club where they can exclude whoever they deem not you know worthy of it. What it doesn't really matter who or what or why. Well, it's I like mean, if they if they if they had that it, ability to exclude someone like that that gets that they get a rush off of that. I don't but know. But I mean, but if you pay the money, they will teach you closed practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Tiger. Is- that's what Tiger was telling me is that they uh, they're charging money to 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 teach to teach people. And yeah. So this person is and clearly my like, is, who the fuck initiated them? Because I sure as fuck didn't. And I've been asking all my friends, and none of them did either. Yeah. It's the same, you know, when people say they have an unbroken chain of vulvas in their family. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know who you're talking about with that one. Oh, it's several. Oh, it's several. I only know of one. Oh no, there's several, and they are, they are all selling their bullshit because it doesn't smell, apparently. <laughs> no, so you know, uh, I'm heavily against it. We do not have an unbroken chain of vulvas or sidemen in yeah. any of the Nordic countries, Scandinavian countries. We have folk magic and some of it derives from, it's still not the same because I don't know, um, a thousand years, maybe. Like, <laughs> things doesn't stay the same. Yeah, exactly. And huh. And it's not, And say if so, it's not even from mother to daughter. If you would do anything like that, it would be from the one who showed the best ability to the other one who showed the best ability. It would yeah. so. It's not like you have carpenter in your blood. Like I don't. Yeah, that's I. Most of the times with, when this shit is going down, it's nighttime here and I'm asleep and I'm, I'm not sorry for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, called, yeah. I called them out two years ago for some bullshit and the backlash people tried to give me for that. And I was like, I, I'm sorry. You don't see what I see. That's fine. Yeah. I'll die on that hill. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny, like the I don't I, I don't know what it is, is that like I don't discover a lot of these a lot of the videos I make about like American mouth or uh um uh, uh stuff like that, like I, I don't stumble upon them. They're usually sent to me by people and, and uh so I'm I'm almost out of the loop a lot of times, uh, until I'm brought into the loop, you know. Um like with the had a few trying to bring me into that and i'm not interested i mean if i feel like something needs to be said i'll i'll do a video on it i but like i try to pick my battles you know and if it be, if people have made enough if, if people have like called out on a person enough times i usually just kind of stay out of it like there's you know they've said what needs to be said and i don't need to you know add anything to it um yeah, because it, it, it's just too much mental strain to try to address every single issue that pops up. So there are people who have sent me videos, and I'm just like, I, I just say, I, I, you know, I'll let someone else kind of handle that one, you know. So I, I try to pick and choose my uh, my rogues gallery, you know. Yeah. I got a lot of backlash when I, I made the video about uh, North Oklahoma cat lady. Thingy. Oh yeah, the, uh, the uh, uh, Omaha Cat Lady. Uh, oh, that's in yeah. Nebraska. Yeah. Um. Because people are like, "Oh, you're doing it for clout," and like, I could not give a fuck. Yeah, I remember that. I remember you were getting some of the backlash for that, and I actually was almost going to get involved in that as well because I've, I like, I still follow her, um, but. I haven't been like engaging with her videos because of that, because of how she 
But it's not it's the first down thing it. she does. I've been staying out of it for three years. And it's yeah. not the first thing she does. Like, she was... It was horrible. Uh, she was... She was slamming this woman, um, Pepper. Her son was killed. Oh. And they were going to have, like, this... Um, Someone contacted uh, North Omaha asking for help to to um, um, crowdfund to get like this parade going because he was in the LGBTQIA+. Mm. And that, that's the reason why he was called, uh, killed, right? Yeah. And, and I don't know what happened because they were on, totally on board and then suddenly they started saying that Pepper was lying, their kid never died. It was a whole freaking thing. And I was like oh. over here going like, wait a second. So I had to check it up, right? And it took me about 30 seconds and I found the article and everything online. And I was like, this is, this is in this. I, what, do you, what, why? And yeah. they took no accountability for that. They just blocked everyone who said anything about it. And yeah, and that's just one of many things. The, yeah, I think, the I, think I saw your... They've gone after, they've gone after just about freaking everyone. Um, yeah, I think I saw your video about her. I remember Salty uh, sent me the, uh, sent me, um, a video about Omaha Cat Lady. I was just, oh, I was really bummed out because I, I really liked her up until then. Um, and then, yeah, then she got involved with the whole chin, chin tattoo debacle. And then, yeah, like instead of handling it correctly, she just started blocking people for it. I mean, so many there said, you know, this is problematic. They weren't even being mad. I have like indigenous friends that made really, really sweet videos saying, hey, I know this is probably just a misunderstanding, you know, and so and so. And they just, they blocked them. And I'm yeah. over here going like, what the hell? Yeah, for real. They blocked me too, but I don't like, you know, I didn't expect any different, but you know, I'm like, that's when I can't can't stay silent right when it's like this the violence that is going on yeah for real and yeah dean yeah that's that's why i was very hesitant about get, doing the whole you know call out thing is because yeah like there's it, it, it can come with a lot of baggage um but yeah yeah but like but like you said fable it's just I I'm willing to roll those dice because like it's something that like you you, you just can't let it go and it has, something has to be said and you can't stay silent anymore about it. So yeah, I, I get that. Oh, I Dean, people have been telling me like, oh, you don't call that person out because they only have like whatever. The fact is, uh, first of all, I don't see them all. And second yeah. of all, again, we are usually in the comment section being nice about it, right? Mm -hmm. And if they like, because it's not like you're just grabbing someone and throwing a mean video out there right you 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 try to to correct and and educate and luckily luckily many are willing to listen yes uh where where you know and another thing that people don't seem to understand is um when you have a um platform of 5 million people Listen, that's, we are 5 million people in my country. Yeah. Um, then you have, you know, uh, a responsibility of what you're putting out there more than someone with 300 followers, right? Yeah. Um, so, so when you get corrected and have 3.5 million people, um, then I would be so so embarrassed if that was me. Oh yeah. I mean, I would totally go like, "Fuck shit! I did not. So I'm sorry. I'm fixing it yeah. right now, <laughs> like quick, yeah, fast, I mean, in a hurry." Because <laughs> I, I only have. I only think. 
because yeah, I did I, it. So it's my responsibility to correct. So, so 3.5 million people possibly don't go around acting like fools because of me. Yeah, exactly. I only have like a couple thousand, I think maybe 6,000. And yeah, if I have to make an apology or like a correction to myself, I, I, I am more than willing to do that because I don't want even, even one person getting the wrong impression or, or wrong message from what I was saying. I, I would be, yeah, like you said, I would be fucking embarrassed. Uh, I, I do not want to be the one spreading misinformation on here or, or, or anywhere, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Like I did that, uh, I did that once where, uh, the um i think it was two years ago around this time uh when um it was right at the start of pride month and uh there were people who were trying to to uh take the um the mmiw you know hand over the mouth gesture as a way to uh you know spread a message about uh you know violence against the lgbtq and I, I joined in, I, I kind of, I hopped on this like uh, duetted train, uh, trend train type of thing, completely forgetting that that was, that, that gesture is for uh, the uh, MMIW. And I, I took the video down. I put up a video. It's like, hey, to everyone who saw that, I apologize. I, I screwed up. I should have known better. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's all, that's all it takes. Like, it just, and like, own, owning, owning your mistakes. It do, it, right? it, yeah. Owning your mistakes is is way more like respectful and honorable than just trying to double down and, and say like, no, actually I was I, I was still correct and doing what I did. Yeah, and when they they started saying, oh, have you ever heard about the rune Isa? I'm like, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it, I, we're we're aware of the rune Isa, but it doesn't belong in your chin, you know. Like, draw it on your ass for all I care. Just, you know. <laughs> Fucking perfect. That's, that's going to be the next tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> that seem uncomfortable. Yep. I have, I have, um, I have a tattoo on my butt cheek. And it's the least painful tattoo I have. It was actually quite disappointing. Um, and my tattoo artist was my was my best friend at the time, and I said, and he was like, "Okay, we're because we were hangover, we had been out the day before, we were bored, so we figured, why why don't we tattoo?" And when you're hangover and bored, and I, I don't know, everything was wrong. <laughs> the, you don't have the best of of you know. Um, fantasy so it was like i don't know what you want i don't know what we're gonna do i don't know it's like okay i'm just gonna slap something on there and i'm like fine good whatever and he was done and he's like i'm done i'm like was that it and he's like yeah i'm like i didn't even like what and he's like yeah i'm like that is so disappointed pointing so he took his end and he slapped me over that tattoo like I had his hand mark over my butt cheek for three days, and I was like, "Ah, oh, god damn, that hurt!" And he's like, "Well, <laughs> that's what you get for complaining." Oh, that's fucking hilarious. I was gonna say, like, uh, for you know, for some tattoos, if you want to get them in like a really sensitive spot, good luck finding an artist who's you know willing to sit there for a couple of hours, you know, <laughs> putting something near your ass, you know. I. I I have uh, my ribs all the way up here tattooed. Oh, nice. That was that was. Ex I'm not gonna lie. That was excruciating. <laughs> I've heard I've heard that the rib cage is really bad. I got my I got this here. Um, Eagle Glow and Anchor and Celtic Knots a mm -hmm. couple of years ago. It was fine. I didn't really hurt. It was just when the guy. Um, was filling in because he did lines at first i didn't realize that he needed to go back in and fill in all that and oh. it felt like a it, it felt like someone had just like taken a cup full of bees and put them right on my arm oh yeah i i imagine like sandpaper when they do that yeah it's 
it was it, it it did hurt at that point, but I'm I want to get more tattoos. I just can't afford it because every time I get any kind of money, we have to stuff we have to get. You know, perks of having a family. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mine is not filled in everywhere, but then again, yeah. I have, yeah. One here. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you didn't see that, did you? <laughs> I didn't see anything. There. Oh, that's cool. Um. <laughs> And then I have a uh, one on my thigh. It's pretty big, but it's not done. So mm. I have to. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> can't read this. It's I... a self. I would totally do that. If I were to get anything written on me, I would do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you can't read this. Well, I, you know. <laughs> no, actually, it says uh, sigh heart, but do not break. And it's because of my grandmother. She was oh, sick. I like that. And we were afraid she was going to die. And I had like problems on my own in my private and my phone called and I was, you know, torn up and she looked at me and she said, sigh heart, but do not break. And then I thought, yeah, that's the next one. <laughs> that's awesome. And then I showed her and she was like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, it's your fault. And she's like, wait, what? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, because, and she's like, you're hopeless. <laughs> or the people who have gotten like I don't know milk in Chinese characters thinking it means serenity it doesn't it means your mother is a dog that's have you I love I love them that when you know all people get like Chinese uh signs and they think it means lion or whatever and you know you see them like <laughs> looking at it going like no it means that's not nice to say out loud <laughs> yeah like, it's fun yeah it means courage no it means scrotum <laughs> yeah i've seen uh I'm sorry for your loss, Dean. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that, bud. Uh, there was a, a show that was on TV for a little bit. Um, it was the, the whole premise of the show was this guy who lives in uh, Las Vegas. His whole job is that he uh, he covers up and fixes other people's like fucked up tattoos. Like when people get drunk and and uh, uh, I've seen some really hilarious ones on there. Uh, <clears throat> Like um, uh, there was a dude that right like he he got a uh, he got he was like I think on the rugby team he got drunk and uh, his uh, teammates told him to get uh, welcome aboard right above his right above his ass. Tramp stamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got a tramp stamp that said welcome aboard. Nice. <laughs> That one's probably one of the funniest ones I saw on that show. Um, the one I have on my thigh, I'm going to have to like do over. Um, I changed my mind. She, she has wings. I'm going to get rid of the wings. And mm. instead, I don't know what you, if you have that. You probably have. To. So it was the morning rose paintry. We call it. It's like a old thing we do. Um, it looks like this, but, but painted, not carved out. Wait, I'll show you. Mm. Um. Oh, that's cool. So this is my great aunt that made this. 
It's a small chest. But yeah. Um, so I'm gonna alter it so it's no longer wings, but um, car like rose paintry that goes out of her back and up and on my uh, on my back. And I'm gonna give her a tail because I'm taking away the wings. So I'm making mm. her into Huldra instead. Oh, okay. And I mean, I need to win the lottery to do all this though. So, you know, but this <laughs> is the plan anyway. Right. Uh, and then I'm going to have all the trolls and the Vitter and, uh, and uh, myth mythological creatures that we have in a big back piece one day, one day. That's awesome. <laughs> My uh, my wife, she wants her first tattoo to be. Uh, well, she's been like kind of debating what she wants her first one to be. But uh, she texted me the other day saying how she wants to get Yoma Gundar. Um, I forget where, but she wants to get a Yoma Gundar tattoo. I'm like, yeah, let's do that. Let's let's get, let's get that going. We have okay. So, uh, it's not your Yoma Gundar, but. So we have our old Stav church in Telmark, the county over where my family is from. And they have mm. the serpents that are carved into the doors. Mm. So if you like, I can see if I can find some pictures and send you, because this is the, sh the church is built in 11 something. Okay, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, and it's, you know, um people think that the churches was only for the christian people but actually most of the rune sticks we found underneath church floors uh so uh heathens and and christians alike uh worshiped in the same house and you can see it on the the style churches too like they have dragon heads and stuff like that it's cool. awesome that's like yeah. how uh I think I'm not sure where I don't I'm not sure what countries okay. have them, but I know there are some churches that have uh like the green man uh in a lot of the uh the architecture. And it kinda makes and that, that kinda I kinda had that same feeling that maybe there were some places that would uh you know oh, allow it to be more of an open space for um not just Christians but possibly some pagans as well. That's just the theory I had. I mean <laughs> I am sorry to say, but it wasn't fire and broomstick and swords that uh, Christianized Norway or Sweden or Denmark or Iceland. Iceland, actually, there were no bloodshed at all. Yep. yep. Uh, Norway, we had some. But not to the extent that people seem to think it was political, right? And it started with yeah. um, Håkon the Good. And... And people like he never used this word, but he couldn't Christianize all of Norway either. Uh, but a lot of them did get baptized when he was king. And then the following had, you know, some uh, happenings that was absolutely atrocious. Um, yeah. But overall, it was, you know, political. The yeah. rest of Europe had church then, and as a king, uh, with the support of the church, you had a lot more power. Yeah, um, that's true. Um, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I, I haven't looked it up in a while, but didn't um, Sweden had a little more, you know, violence in it? Correct, or is that, or am I misunderstanding that? It's. They had violent. No, well, you had uh, certain places in Sweden, like Salty is talking about, where where it was uh, more, you know, um, shit going on than others. But okay, so um, it it was more um, regional rather than mm -hmm. as a whole. Okay, see, I I didn't know that because I I had read in some. A while back when I was doing like research on it that there that there was bloodshed, but I just didn't know the extent of it if it was um 
more if it was like more localized regionally or um, or more widespread. So I didn't know that. So thank you for that. And besides, it started with you know the people on the top. So when you yeah. as a yarl get told, either you you, you lose your yarlhood and your your property, or you say you're Christian. Yeah. And, and the Christian God wasn't anything new anyway. They have come across it for for years and years already. Um, I will say though, so the county that my family comes from, Telemark, wasn't, uh, I want to say 1700. So they, they started making maps, right? From 1600s, 1700s. And that county wasn't properly mapped until the 1800s. Mm -hmm. uh, the mappers was told not to go in there because the people in that county was not friendly and mappers would go in and not come back out. So mm -hmm. on the old maps, you have the county and you have one big um, lake in the middle, but you don't have any of the mountains or anything because they didn't map it for the longest time because of that. <laughs> <laughs> Dean, the castle in Ireland, Scotland. Um, I have, uh, yeah, Germany too. I haven't been to Austria, um, but uh, the castles in Scotland is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. We're actually planning a. Um... It's, it, we were going to plan it for this September, but we're going to have to move it till next September because we can't quite get everyone scheduled to line up. But uh, we're finally going to – my family's finally going to uh, head to Switzerland to um, spread my father's ashes. And uh, uh, my mom is – my mom's actually uh, remarrying uh, my dad's best friend. So um, – and his family is Italian, and they were, – so we're – when we when we go over to spend – because we're going to be there for about a week. and. Um, we're going to spend a few nights in his family's castle in in uh uh northeastern italy and we've seen pictures of it and it look and it's it's gorgeous so that's going to be really cool and then uh head on over to only Quartz. for a week unfortunately that's all we can do cuz uh my mom my uh my with the, the with the like listen i was i was a wreck and i for for 3 days because of the time differences like i, I know it's gonna be I, hard i know it's it's i'm gonna have to muscle through it but um but yeah it's all we can do is because uh obviously my mom my future stepdad myself we're gonna try to get my my wife to go to as long as we can find child care for um my kids um my brother and his wife both my brothers and their wives my sister and her husband and a few other family members were all going. So we have all those schedules we have to get to line up. And a week is all we can, you know, manage. Man, I do not envy you that trip. It's a long way over the Atlantic, I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. I I made it before because I, I was deployed to Iraq. We had to go from because, I, you know, when I, I was deployed to Iraq when I was still living in California. So we went from California all the way over to Maine from maine all the way to ireland and yeah that was a motherfucker of a plane ride but i slept through most of it um landed in ireland uh shannon which i had never i never been to an airport where like the land like the landing strip is like surrounded by flocks of sheep that was really cool to see um and then from shannon ireland and on, i was so mad they wouldn't because we I, I was in the marine corps and they did not trust us out loose in uh in ireland and by ourselves unaccompanied so we had to stay in the in the airport which sucked but uh we went from shannon ireland to uh to kuwait so we we flew out of this beautiful green ireland i fell asleep and woke up in miserable fucking kuwait and i i still resent deserts since then but deserts but, can, can be so beautiful though can they be. can they can. My wife loves desert. She loves the uh, the American Southwest scenery, but um, 
six months in Iraq will will make you hate a desert. At least, especially when you just for me it did. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Because it wasn't like it wasn't like in Aladdin where like you have these big round dunes and like and stuff like we did see that uh, on the way from Kuwait to Iraq, but. Um, Iraq itself is it, mainly where we were stationed. We were stationed near uh, Havania, and it's just flat. It's rocks and dirt, and I, I, yeah, I didn't like it. Overrated. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, there's no real. desert there. Like we have hills and mountains and valleys and fjords. Yeah, it's one big. Chain of mountains. Like, yeah. Yeah. I like mountains though. I'm I'm built for mountains. I'm built for cold. <laughs> yeah, but then you have Denmark. Like Kimilbjerge. Denmark, like, you know their mountains are like speed bumps. My father used to say when I was a kid, he, he used to say, it's all that Ice Age fault. Like, it took all of the good soil and dumped it on, on, on Denmark. That's why they're flat and they have good soil, fuckers. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> they have some beautiful places, though. But yeah, we went up to Himmelbjerge and I was like, is this it? Is this the mountain? Is is uh, this is a this is a hill? Talk about flat. Flat flat was driving across um, from uh, my my sister lives in Austin, Texas. The last time we visited her, we went from Austin and we drove to San Antonio. Um, that was flat. I don't know, like I don't know how anyone can drive that and not fall asleep out of boredom. Just oh. No, I was in a small town called Raymond, and then we went from Raymond, Mississippi, and down to Crestview, Florida. Okay. How did you enjoy Florida? Oh, that was what I was going to say, right? Because here you can swim everywhere, right? And mm -hmm. I saw a lake or whatever, and I was like, yeah, it's hot. Let's go swim. And they're like, gators. I'm like, fuck. Okay, and but it didn't get through my thick skull. So every time I saw a lake or whatever, I'm like, "Yeah, let's go swim." The gators, damn, like they're everywhere. <laughs> then we came down to Florida, and the motherfuckers was lying, like sunbathing on the. Uh, and I know you guys know this, but listen, I, this is I'm still processing. Okay, and this was 2011, and these these. It, Tyrannosaurus Rex was just lying there, soaking up the sun <laughs> on, on, on the on, on, on the I was like, what the hell? You're just chilling there? Like, this is this is somehow your road? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you got dinosaurs on the highway. What are you doing? <laughs> right? I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And then we went to a, a, a creek called turkey creek and it was yep. they said it was cold water so there were no gators there they i don't think they knew what cold water was have you tried swimming in one of the mountain lakes in norway like fuck you put your toe out and your ba bone mar marrow will turn to ice mid-summer it's like, but if you stand there long enough, you can't even feel your body, right? So it's all going to be okay. Just, you know, you get numb, you know? <laughs> um, anyway, we were there and this like uh, big ass spider came down the, the stream. Fucking hate spiders. I hate <laughs> them with a vengeance. I was climbing my friend, screaming. Go on, like, do something, run out of the water. I can't do this. Yeah, no, <laughs> it was no fun. <laughs> Scientific term for a spider, arachnicus deathicus. <sighs> have you uh, have you ever heard of noodling? No. That is 
it is a uh, a pastime in the south. It's, it, it, and I I had never done it. I have never witnessed it, but but I've seen videos on it, and I have family in the south now who talk about doing it all the time. Is they they go they they go into these you know places that have alligators in the water and stuff like, the, and stuff like that. But they um they go stomping around in the in the uh, the shallows and they find catfish holes and no fishing pole, no lures, nothing. They take their hands and they whip them like make it look like worms, and they lure out the catfish like that. So the catfish will bite their hands and they just pull them out of the water. That's noodling. I mean, I will, I, I will try that. That's fine. But I am sorry, Mississippi D and D Dad. I don't care what you think about the spiders. I fucking hate them. I don't like them at all. <laughs> They're looking at you like you're their next meal. I'm not. I'm not down. Oh, mm -hmm. I, have you heard of camel spiders? I, <laughs> I don't, we don't have, like in Norway, we don't have big spiders. The biggest one we have is like this. And th th and I have them here in my house, hunting spiders. They don't make webs, but they will fucking jump you. I'm screaming, <laughs> crying, throwing shit around like I'm. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, spider. Uh, Miss, yes, I do. I I'm not a fan of spiders either. Uh, but I do understand their importance, so I will try to not kill them if I see them. Um, like I'm actually I'm looking one right one right now in my tent, and he's minding his own business. Hey, fella. Um. But yeah, camel spiders. I say, I've seen them in Iraq. They are grotesque. They are not as scary as a lot of the myths make them out to be, but they are terrifying to look at. Um, and they are very fast. They can they can chase down and eat mice. Like that's how fast they are. I don't. Okay, I didn't need that. My bad. <laughs> the good thing is they're not poisonous or well venomous. No, but they I do have a numbing agent. That. They have too many legs and too many eyes, and every just everything just creeps me out about them. <laughs> like I will hyperventilate and 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 cry. And my yeah. son, he's turning fourteen. <laughs> he will come to my rescue. It's, it's fine. I'll <laughs> I'll fix it. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and my wife wants a, my wife wants a tarantula, and I'm like, you can have a tarantula, and you will take care of it. I will not go anywhere near it. No. So my tattoo friend, I was at his home and um, I didn't think about it, but he had like this, this aquarium with nothing in, no fish, I mean. And I was sitting in the sofa and in the corner of my eye, I saw this shit thing just like run inside of that thing. And my brain went like, that's a fucking spider. Even though I didn't really see it, I understood it. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being funny when I say I jumped from that side over to the other side of the sofa in one, I was not close to this, the, the pillows at all. I was, yeah, oh. <laughs> Go away or I'm gonna give you a stale ass cookie. But lizards, though, like I don't mind any other other creature. It's just the it's just the spiders, and I'll try to stay away from them. When I moved into this house, I was, I think it was like the first week, and I was lying in my bed, and and uh, I had my bed bedside um, light on. And I was turning around on my back, looking up at the ceiling, and this motherfucker came down like I yeeted myself so fast out of that bed. Oh. Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah, um, unfortunately, uh, like up here in Washington, everything outside wants to come inside, so... Uh, yeah, avoid, yeah, definitely avoid Australia. So um, that's when we have to deal with, like, mice and spiders in our house and stuff is during the winter because that's when everything wants to come inside and get nice and warm. Same and, in um, Norway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, my wife, while she is not afraid of spiders, 
Well, not tarantulas. She likes tarantulas. She's not a fan of like the smaller spiders, but um. So yeah, she, I've had to rescue her from like just tiny little spiders, but she wants to own a big one as a pet. It doesn't make sense to me, but um, but mice <laughs> on the other hand, she hates mice. So um, winter every like it it never fails. Every winter, I have to buy a shit ton of traps, and if she sees one run across the run across the room, I have to. I have to get up and basically go mouse hunting. Don't you have cats? <laughs> and basically until until she is like has been able to calm down and and feel safe enough to go back to sleep because she hates mice that much. Yeah, me that's too. like I had that the thing with me and spiders. Roaches, we do have some kind of roaches, but not it's not like uh, no. Not the ones you think of. No, we don't have, no. They're not inside. You're going to have to be really, you're going to, that's, you're going to, if you're going to, like, that's, then you uh, will, I think, already be dead from, from whatever's in your house. If you manage to catch a, a, a colony of roaches in your house in Norway, then there's something very, very, very wrong. <laughs> I never seen and never heard about that hair. No. Right. So I'm about to my phone, brother. <laughs> all right. See y'all. See you all day. Bye. What's the number one thing that can unalive you in Norway? Probably elk. Oh, okay. Well, like, are are, are they like actually? I mean, because I've seen pictures of like uh, red elk and stuff like that, but they they look very similar to like our deer over here. Because there's like, because uh, over here we have a uh, um, white tail deer, we have mule deer, and then there's elk, which which obviously from the same family, but they look completely different, like more like a caribou than a uh, than an actual deer. No, so we have uh, there, we have Rodir, which is like smaller than the white tail there, but it's mm, in the dare okay. family. And then we have white tail there, like you call it, we just call it there. Uh, um, um, we call that. Okay. Uh, and then we have elk, which have uh, the big flat horns, but it's not as big as uh, the like. I can never remember who's who's. I think you guys call them moose. Yep, but, moose. I was just gonna say. The moose, moose have uh, the moose are the largest one, right? The really big ones. No, the elk is a smaller cousin of that one. Okay. And then we have reindeer. And then we have like in Sweden they have something called um, dojort, which is. Yeah, it all did essentially. Okay. See, I was yeah, because I've looked into it and like uh, I just it's it it was good to get that clarification that like, uh, but yeah, moose are um because they're up here where I'm at, and they're not so much in Washington. They're definitely over in Idaho. Like, like heavily forested areas have have moose, and yeah, they're very territorial and they'll fuck you up if you get too close. Yeah, so so the elk hair is definitely like the one you have to watch out for, especially now when they have babies. You don't mm. want to come between them and their babies. You you know, you be toast. Oh yeah. Um, uh, uh, two years ago, we went. My we had like a family a family reunion thing over in uh, Yellowstone National Park, and uh, there's a a lot of buffalo bison over there uh and yeah this is the same thing if, if they have a if they have a baby people like and they're done they try to get as close as they can to take pictures of it which yeah not a smart thing to do because they they will they will I mean, natural selection i'm thinking yeah and actually yeah the yellowstone has got so many like stupid deaths in it that they actually made a book I'm thankful I, I, that we bought it as we were leaving Yellowstone, not as we got there, because my uh, my wife wanted a book to read, so we got this book. It was like all the, it was, it was just, it's just a, a big chron a chronicle of all the uh, all the, the the deaths that have happened in Yellowstone, 
And um, yeah, she read that the whole way back, and and uh, she would have lost her mind knowing all the all all that on the way there. Like um, people like just diving into like uh, the uh, the thermal springs. That's why they have warning. Unfortunately, that's why they have warning signs now. Because when would you cause, do that? Because they listen, we don't have them here in Norway, but I understand that if shit is hot, you don't go into it. Like yeah. Exactly. Um, you boiling egg, dude. You're not putting your finger in there, <laughs> like you. Yep. People are stupid. Well, that's um, selection. Yep. Uh, that one, I, I understand why he did it. It was still really stupid to do. But uh, this guy brought his dog to Yellowstone, didn't have him on a leash, and the dog, I guess, jumped in the water, and he dove in oh, after yeah, the so dog. Oh yeah. So instead of thing. cooking one, we're cooking two now. Yeah. And yeah, he he died trying to save his life. They both died. So, um, but yeah, it, like that's it's so hot that like you immediate third degree burns as soon as you touch that water. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love dogs, but if my dog jumped into something like that, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I'm same way. I I love I love dogs, but uh, yeah, if that happened, like there's no saving the dog at that point. Just. Mm -mm. There were there were some thermal springs that had bones in them because they could not get the bodies out. I I remember yeah. I, I have a picture of one of the springs that actually had like a pile of bones at the very bottom for her. I'm hoping it was an animal that hopped in there. Um and yeah they just couldn't they they they, they there's there's no way to get that that stuff out of there so it's just sitting in the bottom of a pool. Classic American pastime: getting too close to things that are clearly dangerous. You know, we yep. had a situation like that in Norway some 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 years ago. Um, I don't remember where they were from anymore, but we don't have a lot of bears because they were hunted nearly to extinction. Um, yeah. And, you know, they look co cozy, but they're big animals and you're not to to mess with them. I know you guys in here know that, right? Yeah. So um, this couple was going up north and they saw a bear and they're like oh great let's take some pictures and the bear didn't threaten them or anything. It, it actually tried to get away and these dumb motherfuckers kept going after it yeah the uh oh. it ended up them being injured not killed but ended up they killed the bear right the state oh. then killed the bear because the bear was attacking yeah and it's stupid because if they hadn't gone after the bear, the bear wouldn't have, like, listen, why don't you just sit your ass back in the fucking, don't go out of the car in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Um, another one of the, uh, yeah, well, uh, Yellowstone also has grizzly bears. And again, you would think that, like, grizzly bear, don't go near it. Um, but I think it was in the 40s, a, a uh, husband and wife tried to, they, they found a mother bear with her cubs and they tried to get a photo op with their with the couple's baby they tried to pose the baby in front of the bear to get a picture of it yeah let's just say it didn't end well uh, yeah even black like black bears are smaller but yeah they're still they, they they'll still get you yeah it's fucking stupid just absolutely stupid i mean who like who, what in I I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, it's like in, it's in like it happened in the forties. Like you would think that they would have just as much knowledge about bears that that we do. I, I don't know. I, that, that's my thought process. It's just you you like you go try to. Though, I, I would think they had even more because I see it now with my children's generation, right? And so I grew up in a. I grew up in a, in the mountains. I grew up uh, on a farm. We had farm animals. We slaughter animals. We eat the animals. I was bottling up the sheep and playing around with them and cuddling them. And then fall came, and you know we were slaughtering them. It was just life was it wasn't that that was it mm. and now like kids don't even know <laughs> where meat is coming from like my kids had to know i was like no 
So I'm pointing out what part of the animal and what animal, and I need them to know what we're eating and, and, and yeah. stuff like that. I'm the, I'm the same way with my kids. Um, cause I, I grew up on a dairy, uh, you know, so we had cows, but we also had chickens and ducks. Uh, we raised, we raised pigs for a long time. So yeah, like, you know, so I've done the same thing with, I, I don't have a, unfortunately the, um, the, the market over here is like, it was, so basically the, the, the family farm is, is being sold, but it, it's, it's okay. It's, it, it is what it is. You know, that's just, we just got to adapt and move on. But, but yeah, that's just how I grew up. So I've been trying to uh, give my kids um, that, you know, that knowledge and experience that like, yeah, it's showing them what part of the animal that this comes from. And, and, you know, you know it's just, you know, it, it, it's just how, uh, a natural part of life. Uh, but yeah, but like, uh, growing up in a dairy, when I was a kid, we would actually get full grown adults coming to the dairy, wanting a tour. And one of the questions that was commonly asked was, does chocolate milk come from brown cows? And I remember as a kid hearing that and, oh shit. And just like shaking my head, just what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard that too. It's fun though. It's fun. But that's just like, you know, when I get asked, <laughs> I used to work in um, hotel and restaurant business, right? Mm. And uh, <laughs> I have had more than one person ask me where we put our polar bears when we don't use them. <laughs> and I was, I was baffled the first time. I was like, wait what yeah the polar bears you know where the polar bears when you don't ride them to school or job or whatever and i was like <laughs> yeah you know so you um yeah you know we have a barn downtown that we just you know we put them in there <laughs> what do you even say to that though <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I have often um, said, I've often said that, like, if I ever won the lottery, it's a good thing I'll never win the lottery. But if, because if I did, I would, I would do the most irresponsible thing, and that would invest in a polar bear drawn chariot, like in uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, because I, I would totally do that. <laughs> So no, the strawberry milk is actually vegan, vegan because it's only made of strawberry. What's up, Sam? <laughs> oh. Oh, man, I'm not kidding. Is... I actually saw a video about that, and I can't still figure out if he was joking or if he really thought that strawberry milk was, you know, made of strawberries and only <laughs> strawberries. <laughs> oh, that, and, and like that's an article about someone in I don't remember where in the United States, but they they put out this uh, article and they were really really uh, angry because people were hunting. Why couldn't they just go to the store and buy the meat that was uh, made there? I seen I that like, too. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Oh, I, I've seen that. I've seen that too. I, oh man. It, yeah, it's, it's like, uh, uh, you know, we had cows and, uh, uh, people don't, re what people don't know is that, uh, cows have, uh, very thick skulls, um, obviously, you know, and, uh, but, uh, so my dad and my, my, my dad and my younger brother, um, when they would get frustrated, they would, uh, they, <laughs> Knowing it would not hurt the animal, they would, uh, in their frustration, if the cow was like, you know, being difficult uh, when we were trying to feed him or whatever, would uh, they would punch him right in the center of the forehead. It would not hurt the cow because the cow's head is too thick. But people would see that and freak out like, oh, my God. It's like the cow is fine. Worry about their fists because they are not love tapping these cows. I remember people coming because my my aunt had cows, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And and the number one question here is, uh, 
like cows, well, it's not even a question. And so, you know, cows don't have horns. And I'm like, what? dude, they actually, they do have horns. Cows have horns. Yeah. We, we would uh, dehorn them at a young age, but yeah, cows have horns. <laughs> Depending on what kind of cow, I know that people do, but uh, so ten marks the, the the cow they had they had we just put um, we would put like this uh, gold uh, golden uh, round knobs yeah on their horns and that was it we didn't dehorn okay. them okay yeah I mean I I, I know uh, there were some farmers here uh, that that do that kind of thing because uh, people thought that taking a dehorner and and doing it that way was uh, too uh, it yeah i could see that oh no uh, no all the all the cows that have horns are not cows they're bulls that's the thing like no they're yeah. bulls they're bulls they're all bulls like you know they there's a there's a calf there no it's still a bull i'm like okay then yeah i can't help you <laughs> Or the um, Thank you for being here, Mississippi D and D Dad. Have a good day. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, te I've seen Texas Longhorns. Those things are ridiculous. I don't know how. I mean, obviously, as an adult, you just get you just put a trough out in the field or something like that and feed them that way. But like as as young calves, when you're trying to like uh, bottle feed them or or uh, bucket feed them. I don't know how you could do it with those fucking those massive horns of theirs. What was another? Uh, what was another weird one we used to get? Um, oh, I can't. I can't remember. That, but yeah, we've had a lot of weird, stupid questions about our animals growing up. Like, uh, oh, um, in in movies, um, it, whenever my dad would watch a movie that had animals in it, he would always. Um, be very critical of it. Like, have you ever seen Napoleon Dynamite? No. Okay, so uh, it's a it's an American comedy movie. Um, it was really popular in like the early two thousands. But there's a scene in it where uh, a uh, old farmer is trying to, um, uh, you know, he, he's got he's he's trying to get rid of a cow. It's too old, so he's trying to like put it out of, put it out of its misery by shooting it with a with a shotgun. <laughs> Um, but, uh, and like the, the joke is that a school bus, a kid drives by right as he does it. Um, and like, that's the whole joke is, uh, but, uh, my dad's watching like the, it, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't use a shotgun. Let's like, say so he's he, like, even though the movie cannot hear what he is saying, he would criticize the movie out loud to it. Uh, I mean, about how, yeah. I don't blame him because I, you can like, I feel sorry for my girlfriend when we watching movies and especially if it's like supposed to be something that is you supposedly can do in real life and i know that that's not a possibility i cannot help myself i have to point oh. that shit out yep my um my poor Pretty wife has to deal with that too. for everyone else <laughs> yep my my poor wife has to deal with that for me <laughs> <laughs> but if it's like if it's pure fantasy movies i don't mind you can do oh, yeah. whatever you like. I don't care. Yeah. But, um, and like, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> heavens help my wife if uh, if I've seen the special features for a movie and I know all the trivia about it. Because I will bring, I will pause the movie, tell her the fact that I know, and then continue the movie when I am done. Are you even worse than me? Yep. She's smacking <laughs> you like I would have smacked no, she you. She she's she's learned that like if, if she just I nods her head and oh like, shh, like you can tell me all about this afterwards right and we're not doing that now yeah no she she's uh she's very patient with me when I do that um so she she nods her head like oh yeah very interesting she she knows I'll run out of air <laughs> at some point uh, do chickens have large uh, talons? Depends on the breed. Uh, a lot of chickens, especially roosters, will have a um, a thing along the kind of like a dew claw on a on a dog. They have a um, a, it's called a spur, but it's a long, like it's if my forearm was a chicken, a chicken leg, it's like it would uh it, it kind of shoots out. 
It's kind of how they defend themselves, but they're called Spurs. I think mainly roosters have them. I think some hens have them too. Yeah, it depends on the breed, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, brown, like, you only get brown eggs from brown chickens. <laughs> oh, that's right. That was from that movie, too. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. It's been a while since I've seen it. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see a really dumb but really like funny American comedy, watch Napoleon Dynamite because it's it's set in it's set in Idaho and it's just it's so weird but it's so funny. You need to text me that in a DM because I'm gonna forget the. Mm. Yeah, the I'll title. I'll text you. Yeah, if uh, have you ever seen. <laughs> You know, I, I, it, it, uh, it was, like I said, it was really popular in the early 2000s. Like, there's a shirt that's in it that everyone wore for a long time. It's the I Voted for Pedro shirt. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll DM it to you later. You. Mm -hmm.